Hey peeps. For today's video, I want to talk about energy exchange. And I want to relate this back to the Four of Swords in Tarot. This is something that's been on my mind more and more over the last few years, especially as my practice has turned over to a full-time card reading, uh, psychic medium work practice. And something that I noticed as well with newer solitary witches finding their path or those who are wanting to work with tarot, um, you know, uh, for self-growth and self-awareness on their path, that this is something that we can kind of approach with a cavalier attitude. But more and more for me over the years, it's become becoming, excuse me, very apparent just how real energetic exchange is. And that if we don't honor the drain that can occur from that, in our personal practice, story, life, uh, we can really hit burnout if we're not careful. And if you are someone who's been around people who have larger practices, who are healers and or readers or acting as priests or priestesses when it comes to spirituality, uh, a lot of healers tend to hit burnout after a few years of practicing and working with others. So. If you're someone who's come to the channel because you are wanting to read tarot for others, because you're wanting to create uh, an online practice or business in regards to that, then this is a video that is going to be important for you, at least from my perspective. So I think when we start doing this type of work, you know, we want to share all the time with everyone in a way, right? Like any opportunity that gets presented to us, we feel like we need to say yes to doing, you know, whether it's card readings for others or psychic medium readings for others or holding a space of healer for others. And what we can forget is that everything is energy at its core, at its essence, right? And when we are connecting in with other people's energy, there are cords of attachment that get formed through that process, right? You could also look at this, uh, a perfect example of this would be a friendship you have with someone where you love them, but every time you spend time with them, you end up feeling very drained after, exhausted after, your energy level has dipped, and uh, you, know, you start to have that awareness as time goes by. That's a really great example of the way in which energy is exchanged between people. And when you are setting up um, a practice, a reading practice, a space of holding space for others, uh, there are a lot of people that you're connecting with and there's this give and take energy that happens, right? Like I've talked about in the past and I, I really do believe that a large part of my work is penetrating others' energy fields with their permission, of course, that's another video, but always with their permission and like stepping into their energy, right? But the thing that happens with that, as with all delicious occult things, is that there's the penetration, the sacred masculine, and there's the reception, the sacred feminine. So in the same way that the penetration can occur, there's also the reception, which does create an energetic link. And there is this flow that's happening between the person getting a reading and the person giving a reading, right? And so at its pure state, when we're totally tapped in and in alignment, then we're just the channel and the vessel for the divine information, right? And that, that is a truth and it's a beautiful thing. And so a lot of healers will say, well, no, this doesn't take anything from me because I'm just the channel. But I do believe as time has gone on that there is an energetic shift that happens as you are reading a great deal. And you have to be very aware of taking care of the body, of honoring the body, and of disconnecting energetically so that you don't become exhausted, bogged down, and sick from the amount of energetic work that you're doing. Now, like I said, at its core, everything is energy. So yes, I understand you can make the argument, well, if it's all energy and this is just another form of energetic work, then like this is not a big deal. But uh, I have to say that the Four of Swords is sometimes necessary when you do this type of work to allow yourself to take a rest, to take a breather, to exhale, to allow your body to rest, um, as well as your energy body to rest as well is very important. And when we don't honor that, that's when things can get tricky and things can get messy and um, 
difficult for the person who's acting as the vessel. So part of stepping into a space where you are doing energetic work intentionally, which happens through the cards or through Reiki or through shamanic work, whatever you know your personal modality of choice is, this there's a give and a take, a six of pentacles energy that ends up happening, right? And it's a beautiful thing but it can also become something that's heavy and that you have to carry around like a blanket and that weighs you down if you're not regularly clearing your energy and if you're not regularly regularly resting and allowing yourself to take a breath. Now, in today's society, this is something that, you know, you will find that pressure when you're starting a practice of, sorry guys, I just need to, my nose is running. Um, you'll find that pressure when you start a practice of, booking all the time. And I had a really hard time with this when I first started my readings. I was doing medium nights and reading for large groups of people. And clients would constantly want me to be changing over and doing that night after night after night or weekend after weekend after weekend. There's only so long you can read 30 people at a go and not get exhausted from an energetic perspective. But for people who don't engage in this work all the time, there's this kind of very Western, like make that money while you can mentality and book it out, book it up, book it out, book it up. And that can become something that quickly becomes really, really draining. Now, when you get that drained, it's difficult to be as clear of a channel because you're exhausted. And it also causes you to not have the experience of pure, unfiltered joy and bliss that's doing this work. Like I always say this work is better than any drug anyone could ever give me, ever. It's so exhilarating, connected, grounded, just oh, opening to get to read for people right? Or to get to do any type of work where you're sitting in sacred space and really honoring and there's that give and take. But if you don't balance that, it can become very draining and you can hit burnout. And that's why I wanted to make this video because I know that there are many of you who are seeking to grow a tarot practice or an energetic working practice at this point in time. And or maybe you're really feeling called to engage in ritual magic and you just wanna be working that magic all the time. There's a reason why the crone exists. There's a reason why there's a dark moon. There's a reason why we lay fallow. There's a reason why there's Samhain on the, lift, on the, the wheel of the year, right? There's a reason why we have the Western space in the medicine wheel. There's a reason for all of these things and it's because the output has to be balanced with time of rest or we will hit burn out and really not be able to do our best work. So I think it's very important to sit with for ourselves, for those of us who are card readers, uh, identify as psychic mediums, who are building up energetic practices, to be very aware of when we feel exhausted. And so I just wanna share like some signs that you might be feeling exhausted and doing too many readings in a day or too much at one point in time at one go for yourself. So you'll get that high but then you'll crash so badly that you have to sleep for a few days um that's one way that that can manifest for me also i'll get intense migraines if i'm doing too many readings and not balancing it out enough with some time off for myself and quiet uh, i find that times of quiet in front of my altar are the best way to replenish energetically after doing a lot of readings and a lot of um workings in this way if you're approaching this more from the ritual magic space you want to look at when your manifestation magic isn't really working so well did you rush it were you exhausted were you not paying attention were you not able to be fully intentional were you not really calling down calling in the goddess because you were too tired and trying to push it. We have to check in intuitively in order to know when it's a uh, you know when it's the time to be balls to the wall full bore and when it's a time to relax and pull back and go within. And what I found over the years for me in practice is I reevaluate every few months where I'm at and how I need to adjust my client reading schedule for myself. So for some seasons I might read 3 people a day, for some seasons I might feel good with four or five. Um, I never do over five a day now because I've just, I'm old enough now that I know that's going to exhaust me day in and day out. 
Um, you know, or maybe I can only do one a day for a time or two a day for a time. Really checking in and, and holding yourself accountable with your schedule is going to help you not hit burnout. Okay, so you've got to do that intuitive check-in. Are you like hitting that high and then crash and burning bad? Are you getting headaches? Are you dizzy? Are you exhausted? Is it hard to even like get out of bed in the morning? Some of those things can be manifestations of doing too much from an energetic or magical standpoint and needing to balance that out. It doesn't mean you have to stop those things. It doesn't mean those things are bad. It means that you need to create more of a sense of balance. And that's why we have the Four of Swords in Tarot because we all need that time out. We all need those moments of like pause, exhale, see where I'm at, rest, and then reevaluate, come back to the table, right? So the physical manifestations will show up. Um, for me, if I'm really tired and I've been overdoing it reading wise, uh, usually when I'm a channel and I'm, uh, I can filter messages from multiple beings coming through very easily, if I'm absolutely exhausted, it will be like everything all at once. And then I will have a harder time in my daily life as racing, having good energetic boundaries at the grocery store, um, at the pickup line for my son at school. It's like when all of those things start to like not be functioning the way that you want, it's a good time to check in as someone who may be reading professionally with, am I overdoing this? Am I hitting burnout? Or again, if you are in magical practice, am I over practicing here? How, you know, where is the balance there? Even when we read tarot for ourselves, there's an energetic exchange that happens between us and the deck that we're using. If we're over consulting our cards, there's gonna be that, anxious feeling it's going to feel anxious it's not going to feel balanced it's not going to feel grounding it's not going to feel rejuvenating when you turn to the cards if you're pulling repeatedly from your deck for an answer and you're really just looking for an answer that you want not the answer the cards really have for you that's another way in which you can hit burnout with the cards as well so it's all about balancing and knowing when to pull back and knowing when it's time to open up and allow for more receptivity there uh, but I've been thinking about this a lot because I know that there are a lot of people at this point in time trying to open up practices and trying to build practices and businesses around their work with the cards. And I know for myself back in the day when I started, which I started reading professionally before my son, well before my son was born, um, there was such a push to just go, 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 go. Like, why can't you approach this like a nine to five job? You know, why aren't you on call eight hours a day for specific clients? Why aren't you constantly 24 seven available, available, available and creating content and doing all of this? And that becomes too much. And so as you approach your practice, you want to look at it holistically and you want to think long term. I want to be reading when I'm in my 70s still for my clients. I don't want to hit burnout at 45 because I've been pushing it so hard and exhausting myself. So I really encourage you if you're opening your own practice or if you've just been working with tarot um, at an accelerated pace lately, or if you're bringing magical workings into your practice, this is something to really sit with for yourself, checking in on when it feels, when it's in the sweet spot, when it's too much, and really allowing yourself to be cyclical and how you balance that. It's not a linear thing like in June every year, it's always going to feel like this. In you know um, September every year, it's always going to feel like this. It's much more cyclical and fluid. And so you have to check in in order to stay in balance and be willing to make adjustments. And I have found that that's very, very important in running a business doing this year in and year out is to be willing to make adjust adjustments. If something comes up and something has to be shifted schedule wise, that's just what has to happen. Um, I would rather have to make a shift than give someone a less than stellar reading because I pushed it too hard, right? So these are some things to be thinking about. What's the balance? What's the sweet spot for you in your readings? Is it amazing high flying until after three and then there's a crash, you know? And people will really push you once they find someone that's like their reader and it's a beautiful thing. It's very exciting. It's a very intimate connection and people tend to want that reader to read for them all the time and to read for all their friends and to, you know, come over and read groups as a whole and, and do this type of thing which is really beautiful. 
um, but also can become overwhelming when people put that pressure on you to work like a traditional, you know, Western nine to five job to have set hours and to always be on during that time. Um, and this is an intuitive field. And so that type of um, demand is often not in the best interest of your physical body, your mental uh, health, and you know energetic balance for yourself so it's something that's important to check in on and i've been wanting to make this video for a while just discussing that it's okay to slow down when it feels off take a break and much like the four of swords and tarot which is my if you don't take a break the universe is going to arrange one for you card <laughs> It's always better to check in and to be able to have some control over that rest period for ourselves as opposed to the universe having to step in and create something really tower moment for us to interact with, right? So I just, I always, always come back to that whenever I'm feeling pressure to perform at a certain rate or to hold a certain amount of space, right? We are energetic beings. The work is energetic, but we're in a physical body and in a physical realm and a physical experience and so the ability to open and to be open constantly there's a timeline on that in so far as when you then have to come in and let yourself balance and ground out the energies in the physical realm so if you are starting a tarot practice if you are a healer or if you're someone who does a lot of magical work or card reading work for yourself, hopefully you find this encouragement to give yourself a break, to create space for rest. Hopefully you find this advice to be helpful on your journey. I am sending you as always so much love and many blessings. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.